It's a beautiful day right now. I am in Dodge City, Kansas. We're still making that trek north to go see the grandbabies. And I wanted to stop and take a moment to show you a solar charge controller that I got in. I want to talk about this a little bit outside where you can see how beautiful and bright and sunny it is today. We're getting a lot of sunlight on the panels. It's actually, it's actually a little hard to see out here because of how bright it is after being inside. In the last video, we did a review on a Li-Time lithium iron phosphate battery. And now we're going to do a review on a Li-Time MPPT 60 amp solar charge controller. I'm going to take you inside. We're going to get some better lighting so we can see directly what we are working on. We're going to put this thing through its paces with a battery and this sun that's out here. I guess it's the only sun we have. And then we're going to talk about it a little bit. Let's get over to the bench. My friends over at Lee Time, you can't even see it, it's buried behind the shipping label, have sent me a 60 amp solar charge controller. And I want to take a look. Let's open this together and see what we get. And we'll test it out on the wall with all the rest of the solar and battery and 12 volt DC gear. What do we get? New features, upgrade of solar charge controller. It's going to go over some of the features. Password required to change parameters and it gives you the initial password. I like this. Whenever you are in an RV park and there's a bunch of Bluetooth stuff, there is a chance that you might run into another Bluetooth device that you can then take over and change somebody's information on and screw up their batteries and change that password when we get in there. That's what we're going to do. Low temperature charge protection for lithium battery off by default. How to use it. Turn it on at the real-time monitoring interface of the solar app or by pressing the sun button on the controller. Make sure the temperature sensor is connected to the controller and the battery. It is not recommended to turn on this feature if the battery itself has low temperature charging protection. Interesting. I guess they would argue about what their what their settings are. And then it's all the same stuff in a couple of different languages. We have the manual. It looks like it's going to be blue. We'll have to get farther into the box to see. Warranty registration QR codes. Lots of different information. The magic sticker for the remote temperature sensor. This sensor will work with lead acid batteries or it will work with lithium iron phosphate batteries. And depending on which type of battery you tell it you have is what it's going to do. For Lithium batteries, it will manage the low temperature charging protection feature inside of the charge controller, not inside of the battery. And for lead acid, it's just going to measure the temperature around the battery and charge the battery appropriately. There is your Bluetooth app. We'll go through that a little bit later in the video. Installation instructions. It's got mounting brackets, how to wire it up. Goes through all the different features, which we will go through together. And then different languages. This right here looks like a quick start guide, but you know what else this is? This is a template for where to put the holes for mounting the device. Put this on the wall, mark your holes, put your screws up, mount your controller. We're gonna do all that later. There is your magic sticker for your temperature probe. Don't lose the magic sticker if you're going to use that. We have a bag full of hardware. We'll go over that as soon as we get the box and everything out of the way. There's your temperature probe right there. Plugs into a port on the charge controller and then you run this out to your battery if it if they're close enough to each other to, to do that. If not, you might be able to extend this. This is just a terminal block. So you can unscrew the two terminals and attach a bigger, longer wire and then screw that back in and you're good to go. So that's actually pretty modular. I like that. Let me get this out of the box. This is big boy. I have seen this style in 30 amp charge controllers. As a matter of fact, I have two 30 amp charge controllers from two different vendors that have this exact same style. However, this is much larger. It is thicker, bigger heatsink and larger overall footprint compared to the other ones. I might have to make some special arrangements on my wall of awesome to install this thing. One of the things I like about this style is that these connectors here that's a little chewed up, is that these connectors here are big enough to put in, I, I have run eight gauge wire into these. You might be able to get some bigger wires in there, but at least being able to do eight gauge. What we have here for some specs is this will charge 12 volts, 24 volts, 36 volts, or 48 volts. It will put out a maximum current of 60 amps. It will receive maximum input voltage from the solar panels of 150 volts. So be careful about what type of solar panels you plug in. I have two 200 watt solar panels wired in parallel and I am going to connect them up and they are 36 volts or lower. And then max input power is 900 watts at 12 volts, 1800 watts at 24 volts, which is where I am, 2600 watts at 36 volts or 3200 watts at 48 volts. But we'll get them plugged in and this charge controller will take care of figuring all that mess out. Let's get this off to the side and let's see what we get in our bag of accessories. Instead of just mounting it directly to the wall, 
with the screws, you can also use some mounting hardware to mount it. Screw the charge controller to these standoffs here. You screw the charge controller to the standoffs, you screw the standoffs to the wall, or you can directly mount it using that template that I showed you earlier, which would get it to be hidden mounting instead of seeing your mounting hardware. So we get four of those, and then we get the four bolts that go with them. Short mounting screws, four of those. And we get long mounting screws, four of those. And then these here are crimp on connectors that you would use to put your wire in and crimp it down. And then you put this into those terminal blocks underneath of the charge controller like I had showed you earlier. And you get one, two, three, four, five, six of those. So one for each of the holes in the controller, four wall anchors, three and three pieces of shrink tubing. So this would work for your load, your battery, and your solar panel negative and your load, your battery, and your solar panel positive. So they've given you a very comprehensive set of hardware. I like that. And then these kind of mounting brackets are actually perfect for an RV. The mounting brackets, the mounting bracket that is built into the backside of the charge controller has the screw eyes. And if you were going up and down the highway with something like this, this could actually bounce off and cause some problems. First off, you'll have loose electrical wires, some of which may be live from your battery or your solar panel if they don't survive falling on the ground, falling off of your wall and landing on the ground. And second, you might risk damaging this, and this is actually heavy enough. This is probably, I'd say probably about 10 pounds. It's, it's a beefy boy, like I said before. And then having this 10 pound beast land on something in your RV would also break it. So this here is a much more permanent install method where you don't have that eye problem and you can put it on you can still use the same eyes in the back, but when you put it on, you have the ability to take those bolts and torque them down, you know, strong fastening, strong hold, so that this thing is not going to fly away. What I did in my RV for the other unit that I have that's a little bit smaller than this, but has that same mounting style, is I put these four on, the, the top and bottom on both sides, and then once it was on and slid down into its mounting position, I put another screw in here so that it can't move up and down at all. So these ones are holding it physically and weight, and this one is locking it in place. And then there is a little ground screw if you wanted to connect this additionally to your ground of your system. Because connecting it through the negative wire to the battery post is also going to connect it to the rest of your system ground in your RV. Just for a comparison sake on the size differences here, like I had mentioned before, I have a couple of these in this package that are the 30 amp controller, and then this here is the 60 amp next to it. And we're looking at a good inch of height difference and let's see about thickness. Another half inch of thickness difference. And then about two inches of width difference, maybe even three. And then currently on our test wall here, we have a 2000 watt inverter. We have a 280 amp hour big boy battery. We've got our load tester. We have a power distribution block and we have the 30 amp controller. This 30 amp controller is currently receiving 14.4 volts from the solar panels on the roof. And you'll see that the controls look almost identical so it probably has the same chipset inside, but that power is currently only going to this distribution block and there is nothing plugged into that block because this load tester is testing this battery. <laughs> and it wouldn't be a fair test if I used the solar panels to keep the battery charged while I was draining the battery. Your total real measurements for this device are 10 and three quarters by eight and an eighth by four inches thick. Okay, we have used the included template and we got it mounted on the wall of awesome. It's getting more awesome by the day. So what we have is the charge controller and it is plugged into two 200 watt solar panels on the roof for 400 watts total. And we are putting 14.4 amps into the battery. We've got the the solar panel cables here, we've got the battery cable here. It's plugged into a power distribution box. And then here is the battery itself. This is the lead time battery that we reviewed in a previous video. I will leave a link up there with a discount code for the battery. And then we have an electronic load device. And this thing's pretty cool. I can control, I can simulate the RV load. I wanna turn the furnace on. I've turned the furnace on. I wanna turn the furnace off. The furnace is now off. I wanna turn the refrigerator on. Refrigerator on. Refrigerator off. Water pump on. Water pump off. Okay, that's enough of that fun. You guys get the idea. So this is the charge controller itself. 
At the bottom, we've got the solar panel, the battery, and the load connectors. I don't typically use the load, but you could use that. There is an amperage restriction on the load. So this would be for something like lights or test devices or something along those lines, but I wouldn't run, I wouldn't plug this load connection here into the RV. I would plug the charge controller into the battery and then I would plug the battery into the RV. Okay, so up here, we've got this pretty cool information display. Let's take a look at this. You'll see what we're talking about here, what our system is set for here, what we're doing here. It says MPPT right now, maximum power point tracking and then how much voltage it is shoving into the battery and then as you cycle through these buttons down here you'll get a bunch of other stuff going on so let's go down and we have from the solar panels 27 and a half volts there are 24 volt panels so that makes sense the battery to the load is zero watt hours the battery to the load is zero amps of draw currently the load itself is set for 15 amps the e00 this is where you would get an error code if there was something going on you would see these lights flashing in a funny pattern but e00 is absence of error empty error no error E01, as an example, would be no battery connected and so on. Let's go down and take a look here. It is telling me it is 86 degrees Fahrenheit in this room and the sun is on the other side of this wall. So it's actually possible that it's 86 on that wall. We have taken from the solar panel to the battery 718 watt hours. So this thing is just, just shoveling it into that battery. That's good. And we're currently shoving 16 amps in to the battery. And let's see if I can turn my load on. And the load is set to draw a constant current of 10 amps. And now we can get a little bit more, 16.3. There's just not that much more sun out there. But if the battery was more full, then you wouldn't be putting power into the battery. The battery would have no room for it to be shoved into. So that's why I have that load up there, just in case the battery's full. I can get a little bit more power eked out from the charge controller. But this battery isn't 100% full, so it is just taking power. I like it. I'm gonna turn that load off. And we're at 16.0 amps. We've dropped down a little bit. And then it thinks that the battery is 100% charged. And that is because I have just plugged the battery in. And this thing, it likes to, to get comfy and get cozy and become family with the battery. And it hasn't 100% learned the battery yet. As you get more full charges and full discharge cycles, it's going to take care of that. Let's look at the settings menu here. Long press that and you get to choose the different kinds of battery. User defined or flooded or sealed lead acid or gel cell or back to lithium ion, which is where we are. I'm gonna press enter on that. Press it again and you get to choose your voltage, your output voltage. So this will do 12 volts, 24 volts, 36 volts, 48 volts from the solar panels or also out into the battery. So I'm gonna select this as a 12 volt system so I don't burn up my battery, but your choices are 24, 36, 48, and we're back to 12, press enter to save that. Now I get to set my boost charge voltage, which is 14.4, and then my nominal voltage for my load is 12.4. You can see the little light bulb blinking up there for the load, which matches the light bulb on the port down there. And then our low voltage is 10.8 volts, and this says off F. We'll have to look in the manual and see what off F means. Let's change through on F, off F. I bet that's floodlight or something. And then we're back to battery type, voltage, boost, etc 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 back to our main screen 16 amps out all right i want to take a look at the application the bluetooth app so that we can see what we can see in there get my screen recording all set up and go into the play store and i'm going to look for the lee time i spelled lee time wrong lee time solar did i spell it wrong there it is lee time solar let's install it oh minesweeper for android pretty quick it's got a privacy policy that's gray text on a gray background that's hard to read I'm gonna go ahead and accept that on behalf of y'all. And it says it is monitoring. Let's, uh, let's pick up a device. Where am I gonna find my device? So allow lead time solar to find, connect to, and determine the relative position of nearby devices. The, it's gonna need to do that because it's Bluetooth and it's nearby, so that makes sense. And then what do we have? We have the BT LT MPPT 4860. So that's Bluetooth, LT is lead time, MPPT is maximum power point tracking, 48 for 48 volts, 60 for 60 amps. So that makes sense, that must be the one. I'm gonna pick that one, I hit the little link icon, and now it is telling me the battery state of charge, which is 14.4. It's telling me that the solar voltage is 30.3, so we must be getting some good sun right now. The boost is on, the battery bank is 14 amps in, 14.2 amps in, so it matches what's on the screen there. The voltage is 14.4, which is what I told it, and you do some math, 14.4 times 14.15 is 203. That's how that uh, calculation there works. This is the load. I can turn the load on or off. Confirm to turn on the load. Confirm, success.
and now it's telling me that the load is on on the screen and of course it's drawing nothing because there's nothing connected to the load and then we have that temperature protection the, the little wire that goes out from the charge controller to whatever you want to plug it in it's currently set to off so you can turn that on today's voltage today's data highest voltage is 18 volts charge amount 755 watts discharge amount zero watt hours max charge power 262 watts nice take a look at historical data and we have a little bit from 48 to 49 and today is 49 on the uh, on the calendar there and then the different colors mean different things parameter settings battery type is lithium iron phosphate system voltage is 12 volts advanced settings and it is currently locked let's unlock it and i think it told me the password in the manual can't see it it was Nope, I can't see it. I don't know if it's right or not. I was so close. I was doing four ones, it's four zeros. There it is. Confirm, enable setting, unlock before setting. Confirm. And we are unlocked and now we can do some settings changes here. We can change the boost charge voltage and I would not recommend changing any of these things, but it is nice that you can do so. Oh, there it is, change password. It does have a change password. So we put in the current password, one, two, three, four. And then <laughs> that was the password it wanted me to change it to. Change it to all ones. One, two, three, four. Okay, now the password is changed. Let's confirm that. Let's unlock it. Let's confirm it. Okay, so I think I need to exit the app. Let's do that. And let's go back in. Let's go to parameters. Let's unlock. It's still unlocked. Disconnect. This is not a charger, so it's going to give me something. Yeah. Okay. So it did take my password change. So all that stuff I said about passwords is true, but you can change the password because I saw it up there. So I have locked it again. I'm going to change the password to, and the password has been changed, and then recover to original password. So it kind of remembers its state once it's connected. Let me close the app and start the app again. We are connected. Let's recover to original password. Okay, so it wants the password to recover to the original, and then I can do that. Okay, so it is password protected. Okay, I like it like that. And you can rename it too. So if you go into the hamburger menu and you choose Bluetooth name, now I can say, this is mine. Keep your grubby paws off of it. And I have run into this while a buddy of mine and I were staying out in the desert together. He had two charge controllers of the same model that I had one charge controller of, and we were all in range and we kept looking at each other's data. So I logged into his and renamed his, and I logged into mine and renamed mine, and then I changed my password while I was in there so he couldn't log into mine anymore. So it is actually a thing, especially if you're gonna be doing a lot of boondocking in a popular boondocking area, like the Arizona desert, as an example. If you are a data nerd like me, then the application is fantastic. It's got some graphing features for some information over time. You can kind of see how your overnight battery usage is going how your daytime charging is going, when your periods of consumption are, if you have any specific periods of consumption. But overall, data is a good thing. Am I actually getting the most out of my solar panels and am I charging my battery up enough to get all of the juice back into the battery that I take out of it when the sun is down? How many days can I go without solar? These are all things that that app can answer for you with the, the graph over time. If you are a battery nerd, then you can tweak the parameters inside. If you're not a battery nerd, then you can lock all your friends out of it so they don't tweak them on your behalf without your permission. These are all fantastic features of this device. If you're new here, I do solar panels and batteries and tech installs and I got a couple of air conditioner installs coming up because it's starting to get warm out and my air conditioner is not keeping up and it's not even hot out today and it's April. So I can only imagine what it's gonna be like when the sun really starts to shine down on this big metal box of mine. So be sure you're subscribed to see that when it comes out. If you like what you saw, there is a link down in the description with a discount code for you for the lead time battery that I showed you last week or the charge controller that I showed you this week. In the meantime, there's a video right over here I think you'll enjoy next. I'll see you over there.